<laughs> okay, so uh, let me move to the uh, next uh, chapter of this unit. So far, we have discussed about the diode uh, models, different types of diode models, and uh, their characteristics, and uh, some simple diode circuits involving resistors only. And we have also seen how does the uh, corresponding input voltage. Uh, if I apply some input voltage to any particular diode circuit. Then uh, what about the corresponding change in the output voltage? Now this particular uh, chapter is on rectification and filtering. In a word, I can say that uh, this is nothing but a chapter which involves the wave shaping. <laughs> we have seen different types of inputs. Say, let it be sinusoidal input or uh, triangular input or say let it be some rectangular input, any input you can apply to a diode circuit and uh, suppose a portion of the input I would like to modify to some extent and based on that uh, we can develop uh, different types of uh, circuits and uh, we can observe the corresponding performance by those circuits. So in a nutshell we will discuss those circuits uh, in this particular unit. A half wave and full wave rectifiers, the limiting circuits, or sometimes also known as the clipping circuits, clamping circuits, regulators, voltage doublers. So these are the different sets of circuits that we will be discussing. And uh, obviously, whenever we consider the half wave and full wave rectifiers, there are relative advantages and disadvantages. And uh, in case of your these limiting circuits or clipping circuits, there are so many uh, clippers. Positive clipper, negative clipper, series clipper, shunt clipper, and the different combinations. Right? And clamping circuits simply uh, we have uh, the positive clamper circuits, negative clamper circuits, regulator circuits. So that is very important. Uh, as of now, whenever we discuss all this, like half wave, full wave, uh, clipping, and clamping, we are basically uh, considering the forward bias and the reverse bias of the diode. Forward bias or reverse bias? So when the diode is forward bias, it is on, it is reverse bias, that means it is off. And for regulator circuit, we will use a particular type of uh, diode, which is called the Zener diode. And in that particular case, uh, we will uh, be very much interested in the, the breakdown region of operation, not the. Get settled down first. Okay, so for half wave full wave rectifiers and uh, clipping and clamping circuits, we will operate the diode either in the forward pass or in the reverse pass. However, whenever we consider the regulator circuit, for regulator circuit, we will use a special type of uh, diode which is called the Zener diode. Hopefully, you have already studied the Zener diode in your basic electronics course. And uh, in order to use the Zener as a regulator, we have to operate this in the Breakdown region. Okay, so it's a special type of diode, a diode circuit. Okay, so the first one that we will be discussing is a half wave rectifier. So, once again, let us assume that uh, uh, that particular notion that we have just now discussed that my input variation is small, so that the diode, I mean, if I just consider the variation of this input from this point, from this point to that point. If I consider the variation of the input from this point, from the minimum point to the maximum point, uh, let us assume that within this region, the, the slope of the uh, that particular graph is remaining almost constant. That means this exponential graph can be treated to be a linear one within that range. So that is the assumption that you are making at the very beginning of this discussion. Okay. So this is my circuit. Uh, I am having this uh, uh, input signal. Is it okay? Clear? Yeah. A little bit more. Hmm? A bit more. Okay, so 
your input value is something like that, the sinusoidal input. This is the signal source, which is having zero DC. I previously mentioned that your input might not contain DC always. It might be riding on zero DC level. The variation is from zero to, suppose the peak is say Vm, it is not mentioned over there, suppose this peak is Vm, right over there, suppose this peak is Vm, right? I am assuming that within zero to Vm, the slope of the, this I peak accuracy of the diode is remaining almost constant, okay? The diode is present and for the timing, let us assume that this is an, this is an ideal diode. Okay, ideal diode with zero cutting voltage and zero on-state resistance and infinite off-state resistance. Okay, now what happens? Now, uh, very simple model, we have this signal source, this diode, anode is connected to the signal source, cathode is connected to the resistor and then resistor is connected to the ground terminal. Now, if it is an ideal diode, ideal diode means it possesses all those three current properties. Vd on zero, R on zero, R of infinite. Okay. Now, what do you find? When the input is in this region, that means input is just greater than zero, that is forward biased. Right? If the diode is forward biased, you understand that this will act as a short circuit. There is no DC bias over there. There is no VD on. This point and this point, these two points are shorted. If VD, if uh, your input is in the shaded region. Okay? And if this variation is small, 0 to Vm, then because of the application of the sinusoidal input, I can expect that the corresponding diode current is also sinusoidal. Otherwise not, otherwise it will not be sinusoidal input, I mean sinusoidal diode current. Even if I, if I assume that my slope is a constant slope, slope is constant, this IP characteristics graph I draw, if I assume that, forget, uh, yeah, this one, so this is my VD, this is my ID, now if I assume that, the region over which I am considering, suppose this is my region of operation, over which uh, the input is applied, suppose this is constant, okay. So, if the input is greater than zero, you have this uh, sinusoidal kind of uh, input voltage that results in sinusoidal diode current and when the sinusoidal diode current flows through a resistor RL then it will produce sinusoidal output voltage. So the shape of this input and the shape of this output will be the same and the starting point of the input and the starting point of the output is also the same. Here the input starts at T is equal to T0, I mean the first half cycle from T0 to T1, here also the input is, I mean the output is on or output is present between T0 to T1, right? What happens in the negative half cycle? That means whenever uh, this particular input goes negative with respect to ground. When the input is uh, 0 or less than 0, then the diode will be reverse biased because it's an ideal diode, diode will be reverse biased. Now if the diode is reverse biased, you can expect that there is no connection between this terminal and that terminal. So, there is no current flowing through this. So, this point and this point, they are shorted. So, this potential is at the ground potential, that is zero. So, from T1 to T2, the diode will be off. And there is no output. So, you have a full signal or full cycle, positive, negative. But, the output is obtained only during the positive half cycle. That means the full half, I mean if I consider this particular wave, this entire half, positive half and negative half, this entire, both positive and negative, they are not present at the output. Only the positive part is present. 
only the half of this wave is present, not this entire wave. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, what happens if I just reverse the direction of the diode? Suppose here you have seen that the anode is connected to the signal source and the cathode is connected to the resistor RL. And here it is just the reverse, that means the anode is connected to the resistor and the cathode is connected to the signal source. Just the reverse? Just the reverse? Yeah, the diode will be forward bias in the negative half cycle. In the negative half cycle, the diode will be forward bias. And now the current will flow in this direction. Previously the current was flowing in that direction. This time the current will flow in this direction. Right? So, once again, now since the current is flowing in this direction, you understand that this potential is larger and this potential is smaller. So, the wave shape is something like that. Sir, here we are assuming ideal diode condition. Hmm? Ideal diode condition. Yes, ideal diode. I am assuming ideal diode. So, in both of these two cases, only one half, one half of the input is present at the output, not the two halves. The entire signal is composed of two different halves, positive half and negative half. Positive half when V in is greater than zero and negative half when V in is less than zero. Okay. So sometimes it is useful, not always, but that is the beginning of the construction of a power supply, regulated power supply. Why should I study this? Uh, well, you people should study this half wave rectifier right at 2024. Why? It was taught 50 years back, the same concept. Because this, uh, the notion or the concept of this half wave rectifier just sets up the fundamentals in understanding the construction of a regulated power supply. Hopefully, in your instrumentation workshop, you will also develop on such uh, uh, regulated power supply. That is the beginning, the half wave rectification, the first ever tired circuits which are there in practice. Okay, so we understand that we have provided a full wave, something like that, sinusoidal signal. Only the half signal is present, only the half, single half is present, but still you can deduce something out of that, right. First thing is that if I just consider this uh, sinusoidal signal over here, what is my DC level of the sinusoidal signal? Zero. Zero. Right? What about the DC level of this output signal over here? Zero. 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 Why zero? Right. What do you mean by the DC level? DC level is the average level. In other words, what I can say is that if I integrate this entire graph oh, over time, no, 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 it's not RMS. How to find the DC level, average level? If I integrate, this is my ground line, this is my zero line. If I integrate this entire thing with respect to T, zero. that will give you zero. the uh, average value. Yeah. So, what is integration? The area under the curve. So, here you have the positive area, here you have the negative area. That gets cancelled. So your DC is zero. What happens to the output? What happens to the output? Is it zero or non-zero? Non-zero. Because if you just integrate this area under the curve, you have something positive. Because you don't have any negative part over there. It's not it's not less absent. Right. So how can you calculate the DC value? One thing is clear, no? The DC is non-zero for output. Zero for input, but non-zero for output. Right, but how to calculate? This VDC? Huh? Integrating for 
as if same uh, as the v out is same as v in, uh -huh. so we can integrate the v in, in the first half. Then yes. So what you get v t c <laughs> integration from mathematical order you can write zero. Let me represent in terms of pi. Radian, okay. So zero to two pi. That is a formula now. V of out t d omega t one upon two pi. That is a formula. That is a formula. Integrate, accumulate, and divide. Accumulate and divide, that is the formula. Any doubt? Anybody having any doubt? Sir, I did not understand how you derived that formula. That is the formula. Which one if I am not understood? Sir, VDC. VDC. So, what is the DC level or average level? How can you get the average? So, suppose in your class you have 50 students. Suppose sir, in your exam somebody has got say, uh, 45, somebody has got 55, somebody has got 63. So how to find out this average value? Average of the, uh, add them, add all the numbers, divide by the number of students. So here I cannot add in a discrete fashion because it's a continuous way. So addition means integration. Yes. Over which range? Inter half cycle, inter full cycle. What is the inter full cycle? The range is from 0 to 2 pi. What is the, what is the quantity, what is the variable that I want to add? That is my V out as a function of T or omega T, right? That will give you this entire thing, will give you this addition part. And what is the range? 0 to 2 pi, so divided by 2 pi. Here? Now, there will be some change. So, what I can write, VDC is 1 by 2 pi. Now, 0 to 2 pi, I can break it into two parts. 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi. Right? Definite integral? Yes, sir. Now, pi to 2 pi, what is the value? 0. zero. Okay? So, only 0 to pi. And from 0 to pi, how does my V out t look like? Sin. 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 Some Vm sin omega t. So, Vm sin of omega t d of omega t. What is that? Integration of sin omega t. Minus cos omega t by omega. I am integrating with respect to omega t. Just minus cos omega t. So 1 by 2 pi, you have minus cos of omega t, 0 to pi. Ah, we have Vm as well, right. So Vm, right? That thing will give you how much? Two. Yes. This entire thing cos omega 0 to pi minus cos omega 0 to pi will give you 2. So, this is nothing but Vm by pi. Vm by pi. That is the DC level. Okay. So, for your actual input, your DC was 0. So, we have shaped the input to some extent. For actual input, the DC level was 0, but here the DC level is non zero. Non zero you can just observe by uh, observing that particular variation of the output with respect to time. But if you would like to calculate this mathematically, then this is a formula. Now, in your exam, you don't expect that always it's a sinusoidal signal, it might be some other signal, some triangular signal, some square wave signal. So you just plug in, because that is the formula which is applicable for any type of input, d out t, d omega t, 0 to 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi, like that. Is it okay? 
Fine. So now, apart from this, what else do you have? Suppose you have sinus allergy, not any signal you have. What is the DC level? Another important characteristic of any signal, of any time bending signal is the RMS level. Right. So how to calculate the RMS level? What is the method? First we square, uh, we take the average and then take the same root root RMS means root means square. Root means square. Isn't it? Yes. So hopefully you know that for any sinus signal, signal whose value is Vm sin omega t. Any doubt? No doubt. For any sinus signal, signal Vm sin omega t. What is the RMS value? Vm by root. Vm by root. You have to Vm by root. For any sinus signal, signal with peak Vm, that is Vm by root. We already studied in your physics. Yes. yes. So for this way, for this one, the RMS is Vm by root. What is your say on the RMS of this one? Is it higher than Vm by root 2 or lower than Vm by root 2 or equal to Vm by root 2? Four options. Better than Vm by root 2 for output signal, for half wave rectified output, the RMS value is greater than Vm by root 2, less than Vm by root 2, equal to Vm by root 2, or what else? You can't say. Less than Vm by root 2. Less than Vm by root 2. Less than. How many favor of that answer? The thing is that, for your input signal, a sinusoidal input, you know that the root mean square value is given by Vm by root 2, the peak is at Vm. Okay, input. Now, output you have only half cycle present. Now, what about the corresponding uh, root mean square value? Will it be greater than? Always the greatest. Huh? Now, with respect to that, with respect to if, if this, if uh, for this input, if uh, your RMS is Vm by root 2, then for this output, whether the RMS is greater than Vm by root 2, less than Vm by root 2, or equal to Vm by root 2, or I can't say. RMS. Less than Vm by root 2. First, we tell you whether greater or less, then we will go for the calculation. Yes, less. Because yes. when we do square the down part goes up. Yes. So that part is absent, no? So that part is absent. If you square that part, it will give you, I mean, it will give you some value, some non-zero value, but that is absent. So it should be less. Okay. So what should be the, how to calculate? V RMS here. Root means square. So first square. So V out square. T or omega t, whatever it may be. D omega t. Square. Then integration, that means mean 0 to 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi, square root of this. Okay? You just calculate and tell me what is the result. Square root over enter thing. Remember from 0 to pi, you have to integrate because pi to 2 pi that is 0. Root 2 vm by pi. The root 2 pi pi into v. 0 to pi it is dm sin omega t and pi to 2 pi that is 0. 0 to pi, Vm sin omega t, pi to pi, that is 0. It will be less than Vm by 2. Vm by, it will be less than Vm by 2. Vm by 2, you are getting Vm by 2. 
Yeah, the result is VRMS VM by 2. So, RMS value is given by VM by 2, which is less than VM by root 2. Okay. The VM by 2. And the ratio of these two that we have just now calculated, the RMS value and the average value, their ratio is called? Somebody has said form factor. Form factor is nothing but the ratio of VRMS by VDC. What is the result? Tell me. By root two. By root two. By root two. One by two. Pi 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 for VDC and VM by 2 for VRM. So, pi by 2 that is 1.57. Okay. Now, your actual output signal is shown to be a sinusoidal signal. Now, try to understand that over here, you have some DC level, whose value is given by Vm by pi, right? And over and above this DC level, you have some fluctuation, which we call ripple. Now try to understand what is the notion of ripple. You understand what is meant by the DC level, average level? Average is given by already you have calculated the average. This average was Vm by pi. Average was Vm by pi. So if this is my input, so I may assume that yeah. So Vm by pi is that level, is that particular voltage level which exists from T0 to T1. Or I can write that my V out T is equal to some VDC, which is nothing but Vm by pi, plus something which we call the ripple. Right? Above that part. Now this ripple value can be greater than 0 or less than 0. Obviously, in the negative half cycle, this ripple is less than zero, and in the positive half cycle, when the input is, or rather, when the uh, your V out is greater than V m by pi, then it is positive; otherwise, it is ne negative. So, this ripple value is that fluctuation. Now, whenever your target is to design one uh, regulated power supply, you always expect that my output side uh, it should give me a constant voltage over time. But that is not happening here. Ultimately, you have to synthesize. I mean, whenever you are also generating some power supply, ultimately, you have to synthesize. I mean, your input should be sinusoidal. Because our power station, they generate the sinusoidal signal, 50 hertz. Sinusoidal signal. In our country, 50 hertz. In other country, 60 hertz. US is 60 hertz. In our country, is 50 hertz. They generate. The power station they generate 50 hertz signal. So using some step down transformer, I can make it okay. Some sinusoidal signal of some voltage, say uh, I can get. Now remember that sinusoidal signal is, is a time varying signal. And I'd like to generate something, some device, some instrument that is that will provide this kind of nature. With respect to time, if I plot the voltage, that will be constant. 
But does this particular circuit possess this? No. It's a variation. And there is some ripple. And I would like to so say that, that is the fluctuation, the disturbances, you can say. I have to reduce this one. So for which you require one parameter. So how to identify that, okay, this circuit performs better than that circuit? So for which you have to measure the resource content. Right. So how to, how to calculate the ripple content? So you understand the ripple is over here, I may say, yeah. Over here the ripple is uh, negative, then over here ripple is positive. Something like this. Something like this. This is the ripple content. Right. So I have to minimize that ripple. And first of all, you have to calculate what is the ripple value. So how to calculate the ripple value? And remember, whenever the ripple is present, it doesn't mean or it doesn't matter whether the ripple is positive or negative. I expect neither of these. Whether the ripple is positive or ripple is negative doesn't make any impact on me. My point is that the ripple magnitude should be as small as possible. If it is greater than zero, positive ripple or less than zero doesn't make any impact on me. As far as my intention is to design one regulatory process. Sir, sir, after identification, then there, there should be only be ripple. There should only be this after rectification. Before now, after rectification, you have this only uh, only one half cycle. Now I can visualize. Now one second, let me refer to that concept that any signal can be decomposed of two different components, right? So remember, this signal is okay. This is a this is a time varying. Uh, this is a time varying signal, something like that. Now I can visualize this signal having two components. One is a DC component and second one is a ripple component. One is a DC component that is a time invariant component, constant component and then the time varying component that is a ripple component. Actually you are getting the sinusoidal but now I am decomposing the sinusoidal. In my mind I know that okay, sinusoidal is having two components, one the DC but plus. But if you are saying practical way immediately after rectification BDC should be similar. No, why, why couldn't it be zero? Because there is only sinusoidal. DC is actually average. Yeah, this is average. Why should it be zero? The input is zero. It's zero at input, but not at output. Calculate it now, VM by 5. Is it? Clear now? Here. Yeah. So ripple is there. My intention is to reduce the ripple. Even for ideal, uh, hold, if the, that is the uh, thing that I have shown. That is the uh, your ideal voltage source. Practically, it can be something like that. Some fluctuation might be there. So we consider it negligible. Negligible as long as this magnitude is small. But obviously, that is not the case over here. Ripple is that much. But remember, whether it's a positive ripple or negative ripple, doesn't make any impact on me. So, the absolute value is not important. Rather, I have to find out the square value of the ripple, which is called the RMS value of the ripple content. RMS value of the ripple content. How to find the RMS of the ripple content? The RMS of the out. How to find out the RMS of the ripple content? Sir, why we are not doing the absolute for diameter? Ultimately, whenever you are allowing this, you flow through some resistance. Some power loss will be taken. Now, 
So that power loss, so that is nothing but I square R loss. That is not I square R loss, that is obviously I square R loss. Why should I consider the ripple, I'm sorry, rather your RMS content? Root means square, by square. Say you're the square root of the root. Okay, that's fine. So, RMS value of the ripple, not the RMS value of the whole thing, this were different, RMS value of the ripple content. Whenever you calculate the RMS value of the whole thing is nothing but 0 to 2 pi in V out squared, D, D omega T, 1 by 2 pi is whole square. But now, we are interested in finding out the RMS value of the ripple content. Okay. So, how to calculate this one? RMS value of the ripple content. Are we well of ripple content? How can we measure this are we well ripple content? Sir, if you square the V out minus V D C, then you can get it. V out minus V D C, we square it, then integrate them on. Alright, so mathematically, how can we represent? In short, in short, how can we represent? The RMS value of the ripple content. Ripple understand now? So the RMS value of this ripple continuity. So ripple at the major part of the interval. Which part? Obviously, you have to consider this one. You need to consider because whenever it is whether it is positive or negative, ultimately it's a ripple. Negative part of the classical. Now I want to design something, some rectifier for which this RMS value of the ripple content, RMS value of the ripple content should be small with respect to the average value of the Output. Suppose there are two different types of rectifiers. In one case, I find that the RMS value of the ripple because that is unmeasurable part. RMS value of the ripple content, or rather, ripple content is an unmeasurable part. So, if you take the RMS value of that, that ripple content, not the RMS of the whole thing, the RMS value of the ripple content. Now, you have to normalize this RMS value with respect to the average value of the output. So, you have already got one such parameter, which is called a form factor, the RMS value of the overall output by the average value of the output. For a half hour rectifier, you have found that value to be equal to pi by 2, that is 1.57. But now, we are interested in finding out the, the fluctuations and for which type of rectifier these fluctuations can be minimized. So what should be the benchmark? One is obviously the ripple content, I have to find out its uh, RMS component of the ripple, ripple value. You have to normalize with respect to the average. And then this factor is known as, because since it signifies the presence of ripple, so it signifies, or that particular parameter 
is known as the recovery factor. So that normalization. After normalization, what you are getting? The RMS value of the ripple content, if I call it DR RMS, that particular thing, when it is normalized, because you might be having different, different types of identifier, one case you have a smaller uh, DR RMS, at the same time smaller V average. Might be some other identifier for which you have higher VR RMS and higher V average. So now you have to normalize, now which one is better? Normalized means? Normalized means with respect to the average value. So, the ratio. Uh, ratio, ratio of these two. So, that factor, ripple factor is nothing but the uh, VR RMS, uh, I mean the RMS value of the ripple component divided by the average value of this output. And that is known as the ripple factor. And obviously, you can, you can after calculation, you can verify that this ripple factor and the form factor, they are related. And there is another important parameter, which is called the peak inverse voltage. That is very important. Peak inverse voltage. What is that? So these are the essential parameters by virtue of which you can compare different types of rectifier circuit. What is the peak inverse voltage? Peak inverse voltage is that particular voltage which a diode can withstand in reverse bias operation. Peak inverse voltage or in short PIV. So now if you take a look at this half wave rectifier circuit, can you tell me what should be my PIV? What is the PIV for this diode? Or rather the diode, what about the PIV that this particular diode experiences? So VM, 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 VM. Minus VM. Okay, the magnitude is VM. That means when the diode is in reverse bias condition, suppose here, when the diode is reverse bias condition, so since it's a, this particular circuit, I mean the diode will be on in the negative half cycle. So in order to calculate the PIV, you have to consider the input during the positive half cycle. During the positive half cycle, what is my output? At the anode terminal, what is the voltage? That is zero. What is the cathode voltage? This V in. What is the peak of the cathode voltage? Vm. Vm. So, PIV is equal to Vm. And there is a PIV rating for each diode. Peak inverse voltage rating. Suppose the PIV of the diode is given by say 20 volt. What does it mean? That means if your applied negative voltage is greater than 20 volt, negative voltage, applied negative voltage greater than 20 volt, then the <laughs> diode will be burned. So you are not allowed to operate the diode beyond that. So as I have told you that okay, diode can be used as a switch. But it's not an ideal switch, it's a practical switch. For ideal switch, it can withstand any amount of negative voltage. Then also there is no current. But since it's a practical kind of thing, so obviously in, in the manufacturer data sheet, it is provided that, okay, this will be my uh, maximum level, maximum voltage that I can apply across the diode. Uh, what's the third circuit is not forward wise in the negative cycle? This one? Third circuit is not forward wise in negative cycle. Yeah, it's forward wise in negative half cycle. It's forward wise in negative half cycle, so that's why when I am calculating the peak inverse voltage, I would like to observe the positive half cycle. And for the second circuit, uh, the PO will be zero throughout. Second circuit. Yeah, from T1 to D2, V out is 0. Uh, from T0 to T1, it will follow the sinusoidal graph like this. Uh, but sir, it is reverse bias, so how will you know which is the current or not? It is not reverse bias. No, it is not. So, during the negative half cycle, during the negative half cycle, the current will not flow. During the positive half cycle, the current will flow. 
It has been shown in the negative half cycle. What happens in the negative half cycle? So that's why zero current, zero ampere. Do you understand that? Huh? If I just compare these two, both of them are same circuit. This circuit and this circuit, both of them are same circuit. This is during the positive half cycle. This is during the negative half cycle. So during the positive half cycle, you have this. And during the negative half cycle, you don't have this. You have this one, zero. So this dotted signifies what happens during T0 to T1. Okay. No. From T0 to T1, this dot is on. Ah. Second side, the same circuit. Both of them are same circuit. Only you applied or you are considering the different states of your input. Same circuit, na? Same circuit. Uh, same circuit. Same circuit. Okay, so now PIV for this diode is VM. In route up to this? No. Then what I can do is, we are not happy. We have only one cycle is rectified, only one cycle is present over there. We require at least two such cycles. Right. PIV is the maximum reverse voltage that the diode can withstand. Maximum peak inverse voltage. Peak inverse voltage. I can apply any voltage across the diode, but diode might not withstand. Okay. 